If you want to know the secrets of existence and the true meaning of life, I can't help you. But if you want some book recommendations, why not try reading the ones I wrote? If you are a fan of giant monster mayhem and anime weirdness, why not try Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1? If horror is more your style, you can't go wrong with the occult mafia. Those who enjoy their fantasy with a dark twist may be interested in Emerald of Maddox City. And if you're interested in shared universes, why not read all three? Hop on down to the description for links to all three books on Amazon. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Omni Viewer, and do you remember how I said in the last video that Godzilla Singular Point would have to screw up really bad in order for me to write it off as a failure? This episode comes dangerously close to that. My word, this was not a good episode. First of all, the human characters, I'm through caring about them, because this episode gave me a reason to no longer think they're ever going to go anywhere. Yun is nearly dead at the end of the last episode. He was on Jet Jaguar's shoulder right when they struck the killing blow against Anguirus, so he was nearly killed in the process. He, when we first see him in this first episode, very first scene of the episode proper, he's being interviewed, he looks traumatized, there's that high-pitched whine sound that lets you know something's not right mentally with him. He looks like this is going to affect him going forward. Very next scene, he's over it. Never comes up again. Yun just gets completely past it, and it's like nothing ever happened at all. And that's the closest thing we get to character development in this whole darn episode. Again, every other character we see is just there to deliver exposition. And sometimes it's not even exposition about something relevant to the plot. My word. Uh, another thing that bothered me about the human characters this time around is... It didn't seem to be like there was any rhyme or reason to certain things. That one reporter guy somehow gets down into the basement where the Godzilla bones are and gets the drop on the one government employee. How the heck did he get down there? Are they going to explain it later? Maybe. But at this point, I just see it as something that makes me wonder, how did he get there? Uh, Dr. Lee somehow knows that that one creepy looking guy is going to use the orthogonal diagonalizer, even though he just decided he was going to do it, and uh, there didn't seem to be any time for them to actually contact her about that. She just knows it so she can say it. How does she know it? This episode has no rhyme or reason to it in certain regards. Stuff happens because it's supposed to happen. People say things to let us know that they're happening just because we have to know that they're happening. I'm through with these human characters. Uh, until... Uh, unless something happens that really pushes them forward, and really forces them to develop, because at this point it would take something to actually force them. I'm just calling them wasted. I don't care anymore. They had their shot, and at this point I don't see any reason to think that they will get any better. So, screw it all. The human cast is a wash. Done with them. Thanks for wasting my time. As for the monster side of things, well, we finally get an AI downloaded into Jet Jaguar. It wasn't the AI I predicted. It's actually Yun's AI, though I'm not necessarily ruling out that Pelo 2 won't still wind up in there somehow. But at this point, Jet Jaguar is his own autonomous robot. But that comes at the very end, and that's setting up the big battle with Godzilla. How he's gonna fight Godzilla, who the heck knows. But... He also got his upgrade, he now has legs that are proportionally correct to his body, and he looks better. I can actually get behind this particular design way more than the previous ones, way more than the one that Bandai decided was worthy of a figure. You couldn't have gone with the one that actually had legs on it, but that's like, that comes at the very end. The very beginning has Godzilla make landfall, 
and confirms that Godzilla going through metamorphosis in this series is totally pointless. Giving him different forms, specifically ones that look like other monsters, who cares? Uh, here's how it goes. Godzilla Aquatilus, that looks like Titanosaurus, chases the Manda into Tokyo. Um, it, because they're all shrouded in the red dust cloud, it's hard to see exactly what happens. But he apparently catches one and kills it, and that's when it occurs to me that we actually haven't seen Manda do anything. The Manda have just been seen in bits and pieces, and we're expected to just sort of accept that they're there, even though they haven't really done all that much. They just sort of swim around and have swum away from Godzilla. But anyway, enough about how they've wasted Manda at this point. Godzilla Aquatilus catches Amanda, lands, and suddenly he's Godzilla Amphibia, which looks like Varan, complete with Varan's roar. It is that sudden. He goes from one form to another. So why did you even bother? Why have those other forms? I mean, I get why. I get that Toho wants to repeat Shin Godzilla somehow because they learn all the wrong lessons from the movie that is a wild success, just like any other movie executive would do. But story-wise, why even bother? What was the point of having a different form of Godzilla if he's just going to instantly change? I mean, I still don't like Shin Godzilla, but for crying out loud, that movie at least gave us a reason for why Godzilla was mutating and evolving. Here, it just happens. And there's no reason for it that I can tell. And moreover, it pretty much wastes the whole idea of giving Godzilla a first form. Other than giving us one really cool shot of Godzilla Aquatilus breaching, there was no point to having a hydrodynamic Godzilla. And moreover, it's very disrespectful to Titanosaurus. Now I may as well talk about it. See, the thing is, giving Godzilla other forms because you want to repeat Shin Godzilla, whatever. Your movie, do what you want to do. But Titanosaurus is his own character. Just saying he's a different form of Godzilla now, that's proving that you actually don't get it. For as much as the production has done to show that they actually do get it, this makes me wonder how much they get it. Or, maybe how much Toho was forcing their hand. Because I know for a fact that this had to come from Toho. They want an emotionless Godzilla, like in Shin. They want a metamorphosizing Godzilla, like in Shin. So, they probably said, you have to do this. And they basically didn't have a choice. So they made a Godzilla that looked like Titanosaurus, but... <sighs> Titanosaurus, like I said, is his own character. He has his own personality. You want to talk about whether or not Varan is just a rehash of Godzilla with slightly less interest, or maybe some different kind of interest? Whatever, we can talk about that another time. But Titanosaurus, you cannot argue that. Titanosaurus is clearly defined as a creature who under normal circumstances, would be completely peaceful and not want to engage in battle at all, but is essentially forced into it by the invaders from the Black Hole and Dr. Mifune. He's a tragic kaiju. He's a kaiju who has lost his own free will. I mean, heck, that's evident in Terror of Mechagodzilla. He's attacking Tokyo while he's under the mind control. Godzilla comes and starts fighting him. They battle for a little bit. Then the mind control stuff shorts out. As soon as mind control is lost and Titanosaurus' own will is restored, he just turns around and walks away. Doesn't even feel like finishing the fight. Even Godzilla looks confused, and he's like, What? Did I win? I'm gonna say I won. Victory roar! And that makes Titanosaurus's seeming death at the end even more tragic, because at that point the mind control is still broken, but Godzilla's not sparing him that time. It's subtle, but it is there. And now you've taken that interesting character and just said, you know what, he's Tadpole Godzilla now. That's all there is to him. Screw you. I do not like that decision. I like the design, I thought it was a cool design, but... You just made him an alternate form of Godzilla, which completely misses the point of the character. And then, you didn't even really use him. You just instantly had him turn into Varan. 
And how long until Varen turns into Godzilla Terrestris? That doesn't happen in this episode. I'm assuming it'll happen in the next one, and it'll probably be just as sudden. Oy vey. Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, I didn't like this episode. This episode was... bad. There's no other way to say it. This was just a bad episode. There are other things to talk about, I suppose. The orthogonal diagonalizer, thagomizer, whatchamacallit, or whatever the heck it's called, apparently looks like the oxygen destroyer and crystallizes the red dust, which means it's the only weapon potent against a kaiju, and it at least immobilizes Salunga, or Shalanga, or however the dub is choosing to pronounce it now. It's like they... I know they pronounced it Salunga in the previous episode. Now they're pronouncing it Shalanga. It's like they can't make up their minds. But anyway, Salungalanga Shalangi Shlong is immobilized, at least. From the look of it, he might still be alive, but for the moment, he's out of the picture. But with very little fanfare. I didn't really get enough time to really decide whether or not it was justified to have him look like a mix of Gabara and Baragon, and thereby treat him as his own monster, or if he just should have been one of those monsters. I don't know, because we didn't really spend enough time with him. Is he coming back? I don't know. I'm not even sure I care anymore. And... That's really all. <laughs> Uh, they confirmed the song came from the bones, but that was already confirmed a few episodes back. Yeah, th this was not a good one. This was a bad one. I, I do not like this episode. I really hope this is not a continuing downward trend. There needs to be more. There's got to be more substance behind here than just... Techno babble. look at how smart I am for saying all these big words and concepts that you don't understand, and oh, by the way, here's some fancy monster action to distract you. There's got to be more than that, or else Godzilla's singular point is even more of a waste of time than the Polygon Trilogy. Well, that's all I've got for this one. I guess I have to move on to the next episode, but... I don't really want to at this point. Please let it pick up after this. You guys keep saying it gets better. Some of you do at least. I'm trusting you guys here. But I'm not entirely convinced based on what I'm seeing with my own two eyes. Eh, whatever. On to episode 8, I guess. Until such time as we meet again... This is the Omni Viewer signing off. If you enjoyed what you just saw, hop on down to the description for links to Patreon, DeviantArt, and all of our social media, as well as links for Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, and Emerald of Maddox City, three original novels I think you'll really enjoy. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.